Hey guys, this is the follow-up to the first tutorial. It's just going into more detail and explaining exactly what I did in the first video. When you're in the editor, you can get back to the game by clicking on return to game up here in the upper left. And then you can go back to the editor by clicking on the show editor button there. We've got the card already loaded up here and can go into more detail in this view where the card is really big here in the editor you can change the mana cost or you can change the name of the thing which i did and then you can change the attack and the hp as well this is where you put your name like i said you can put whatever you want there if you want to be somebody mysterious then you can come up with a pseudonym and this is the line where we have the artist so if you want, you can put your own name here or make a joke or something, but we automatically fill it by default with whoever the artist of the image that you picked is in the image editor. So here it's the guy that made all our, the art for our core set cards, which is Alexander Zagorulko. When you wanna actually edit what the card does, you click on the rules text of the card. Makes sense, right? So here's also where you would change the affinity if you wanted to, or the rarity. And then this is the field where if something has an effect right when it comes into play, then you check this box as a summon ability, and then you can give it a description and it does something there. We're not doing that with this card. We're just giving it one ability, which is deals one damage to a target. So when you click here, you can see that this box opens up in a column to the right and that's the general format of the editor you know this is the base card this is the rules for the base card and then each box you click goes one level deeper this checkbox has a target means that when you play the card you have to target something so you could theoretically make a card which doesn't actually do anything to the target, but it still needs a target or maybe something like gain life equal to the target's health or something like that, right? Basically, if you're selecting something, then you want to, if you're selecting something while you're playing the card, then you want to give it a target. So this one, you know, you want to choose a target and then have it deal one damage to that target. When you do say that it has a target when you've checked this box this thing target will show up inside of this card's properties so this card here is just all the things about this card all the information about this card that you can access so it could be its targets but it could also be its own controller like if you wanted the active to always deal damage to yourself then you would click controller here because it's the person who controls that card same thing with opponent uh, you could have some pretty complicated effects like card that last damaged this unit. You could make it so it dealt one damage to whatever dealt damage to it last. That's actually a pretty cool effect. I hadn't really thought about that. And then this part is my favorite part, definitely. Adding the animation. You pretty much always want to add an animation to any card that does anything except uh, draw cards. I think if your card has an effect and then you can see the cards moving around because of what your card did, you might not need an animation, but if you're dealing damage, for example, the only thing, if you don't have an animation, then the person's life just goes down and no, nobody really understands what happened. So I would honestly say this is, if you're doing something like dealing damage to a target, it's just bad design not to have an animation. Plus, they look really cool. There's all these different ones you can choose from here. We're going to be adding a lot regularly. And then you can change the color of the animation as well, which you saw in the video where I made the explosion green. So like I said in the video, when you're satisfied with your card, you can test it out with this button. And it'll immediately just show up in your hand right there and then you can try it out against the AI here. And if you want, you can do it multiple times. This is just a sandbox. The only purpose of this mode is to create cards and then try them out, so no balance concerns here. 
And then once you're done with your card, you click save and it generates an image of what the card looks like. And then you can click this and it'll open a link to Reddit in your web browser. I hope that explains some things. If you were confused in the previous video, thanks for watching and have fun making these cards.